Welcome to the War Academy channel. Today we have a very interesting program, in which we are going to see the stories behind the most symbolic and famous photos of the Second World War. We are referring firstly to the photograph that was taken on Iwo Jima on February 23, 1945 at the top of Mount Suribachi, and secondly to the one that was taken in Berlin, on the roof of the Reichstag on May 2, of that same year. And it is that, and as we will see below, both share many similarities, the most characteristic being the curse suffered by the men who had something to do with her. Having made this presentation, let's go on to see the history of the iconic photograph of Iwo Jima, for which we have to go back, as is evident, to the American invasion of the island. This island, barely 8 kilometers long by 5 wide, represented the last obstacle to the US bombing of the main Japanese cities. In Iwo Jima there were the airfields from where the bombings of the United States could be intercepted, as well as different radar stations, from which the information was sent to Japan. With the conquest of the island, the United States could locate its new airfields about 2,200 kilometers from Japan, and thus have greater facilities for its different air attacks. The final landing on Iwo Jima began on February 19 after three days of heavy naval and aerial bombardment of the island. Although the conquest of the island had been planned in just five days, due to the good defense that the Japanese appeared on it, the operations on it lasted for more than a month. The American landing took place on a wide beach in the south of the island, from which they moved inland. This cut off the Japanese garrison defending Mount Suribachi, which was on the far left of the island. After four days of hard fighting, an American platoon made its way up the slope of the mountain, until it was crowned on the 23rd. It was at this moment that they raised a flag that they carried with them, using a pipe they found in the area as a mast. Thus it was that while the fighting both inside the caves of Suribachi and in the rest of the island continued, the American flag was raised. This action, carried out around 10.30 in the morning, was photographed by Sergeant Lou Lowry, but it was not the one that became famous, since it was another group of soldiers that would end up making history. It was precisely after seeing the flag that was already raised on the top of Suribachi, when a series of soldiers decided to raise a much larger flag that they had at hand. While they headed to the top this time with the very clear intention of the feat they were going to do, a series of photographers accompanied them. Once up, they began to raise the flag and the moment was photographed by the photographer Rosenthal, and also recorded on video by another correspondent. Rosenthal quickly sent the photograph to his agency and by the next day, that photograph was published in almost all American newspapers, bringing all its protagonists to fame. It should be noted that the soldiers who actually raised the flag for the first time were forgotten by the press, since all the attention was focused on this one that was already known by all. However, the fate for the Marines who came out in it was not very enviable by anyone. In the first place, of the six that come out on it, three did not make it out of the island alive. Likewise, the reporter who recorded the moment on video also fell under Japanese fire in Iwo Jima, being buried in one of the caves. With regard to the other three Marines, two of them died in bad conditions, with their lives destroyed by the mismanagement of that unwanted fame, and the remaining one, Private Bradley, had to always make an effort to hide his identity so that they would let him come. The one who came out the best was the war correspondent Rosenthal, being this the author of the photo, who enjoyed many awards and recognition. Once we have seen this iconic American photograph, let us now see the one that the Soviets took in Berlin. This photograph is even more symbolic than the previous one, since it represents the total victory of the Soviet Union over Germany, and it is precisely the red flag waving at the top of the Reichstag. First of all, it should be noted that ironically, this building had no meaning for the German government at the time, because after the fire of 1933, the building was practically abandoned. Hitler's plenary sessions took place in the nearby Opera Kroll building. The Soviet soldiers who ventured to take this photo were unaware of this detail, and considered that the Reichstag building was the greatest symbolism of Hitler's power. Clarified this, let's go with the story behind this second photograph. The Soviet assault on Berlin began with the attack on the Silo Hills on April 16, 1945. Little by little, the Germans were pushed into their capital, 
until approximately by the 24th the city was completely surrounded. From that point the fighting intensified and became increasingly harsh throughout the city, while the Soviets made their way to the government district. It is estimated that in total there were about 5,000 German soldiers, belonging to the Waffen-SS, who barricaded themselves in the Reichstag building to resist there until the last consequences. After very hard fighting for possession of the building, the Soviets were advancing, until during the evening of April 30th, a group of Red Army soldiers managed to reach the top of the building to raise the flag. This event was a great gift for Stalin who could sell said news by coinciding with the iconic date of May 1st, that had so much symbolism for his government. However, this photograph that we are seeing, which was sold as the original from that night of April 30th, was a montage that was not made public until the fall of the Soviet Union and the declassification of files that this entailed. The journey of this photograph began when it was published for the first time on May 13, 1945, and from then on it spread throughout the planet, reproducing itself again and again in all the history books. The official version indicated that it had been taken during the night of April 30th, while the fighting in Berlin was still taking place. The famous soldier who comes out holding her was Sergeant Melitin Kantaria, who was honored with the decoration of Hero of the Soviet Union. The soldier who appears with the below, was condemned to oblivion because he was Ukrainian and did not want to give such prominence to a soldier of that nationality. However, this photo, as stated, was not taken on April 30th while the fighting was still going on, since it was taken on May 2nd when the city had already surrendered. Due to this, it had to be retouched and the columns of smoke in the background of the image were added. Another thing that had to be retouched was the watch on the right hand that the soldier was wearing, the result of looting. In short, the Soviets had a great photo session that May 2nd, with everything prepared for the occasion. This photograph had a great impact and became a symbol of the Great Patriotic War, although not everyone was happy with it. As is evident, those who were angry were the Soviet soldiers who really risked their lives that night of April 30th, to climb to the roof of the building and raise the flag. These soldiers also did so under pressure from their commanders, who wanted the flag to fly there before the end of that day. As extra motivation, they promised the soldiers the decoration of hero of the Soviet Union if they succeeded. It was specifically at 10.40 p.m. on April 30th, when the Russian soldier Mikhail Petrovich managed to perform this feat, but due to the intense fighting, the scene was not photographed by anyone. In the same way, and because it was night, it would have been difficult to obtain a photograph of that action. It has been speculated that it was Stalin himself who ordered this photo to be taken, due to the great success that the one made in Iwo Jima, a few months before, was already obtaining. This was intended to generate a new propaganda icon much more powerful than the American. Curiously, as also happened with the Iwo Jima, the one who took all the prominence was the soldier Melitin Kantaria who had been used as a model that May 2nd, instead of the first man who had really done it two days before. Mijail Petrovich was claiming all his life that this merit had been his, but he was ignored and instead he was awarded a much lesser decoration. The man had to wait until 1995, this being the 50th anniversary of the taking of Berlin, for his feat to be publicly recognized by Russian President Boris Yeltsin. Well, what do you think of these stories? Do you consider paradoxical the similarities that occur in both photographs? I invite you to leave your opinions in the comment box. The books that we have used to carry out this program have been, The 100 Best Anecdotes of the Second World War by Jesus Hernandez and Berlin 1945 by Antony Beaver, one will leave you both links as well as the direct ones that we did about the Battle of Berlin in the description. That's all, subscribe and like if you like this program and see you in the next video, see you soon.